Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, June 12th. Okay, so we had the moon in Leo energy go void, of course, here yesterday afternoon, 3.17 p.m. on the 11th. And of course, we've been sitting in that void for quite some time, but we are going to see the moon move into Virgo energy at 1.39 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here this morning. So the transition from Leo energy to Virgo energy is always felt, mostly because we're kind of riding high. There's a little bit of a pep in our step. We're kind of building in our boldness, our bravery, our courage to do all of the new things in that Leo energy. And then we move into an Earth energy. Now, Virgo is an Earth energy. However, it is ruled over by Mercury. Mercury's in his rulership over Gemini season. He's in his rulership in Gemini energy at this particular point in time. So typically speaking, with Virgo energy, we're all up in the headspace, but we're all up in the headspace analyzing, dissecting the problems, the issues that we're currently banging our head against the wall about and we're coming up with solutions. Now, Virgo energy is the fixer of the Zodiac, but we have to become aware of the problems in order to actually fix them. The Virgo energy is very much realizing that what we allow to consume our mental plane, our mind space, is what we actually manifest here in the physical realm. And we can reverse mechanic that as well. So that meaning, if you have a situation in the physical realm that is not favorable, Change your mind about it. Change your perspective about it. See it from a different lens, and then you will see how to fix it, how to resolve it. If you've reached a certain capacity with looking at something from a certain way and not being able to do anything about it, you can't change the physical realm until you change the inner realm. So if you need a change in your perspective, a change in your emotion in order to actually change the vibration and frequency in which you're operating from, that is how how you make the change in the external realm. So to say that we kind of feel heavy and weighted and cluster aft in our headspace when we move into Virgo energy would be an understatement. When we first move into Virgo energy, yeah, we do come a little bit consumed with the problems. We have to be very kind of, I'm going to say, up close and personal with our problems in order to actually figure out how to fix them. And spoiler alert, it comes down to the small little things that we have power and control over in order to actually create a more dramatic effect, a more dramatic change and transformation. But over the next couple of days, of course, this Virgo energy is going to help us fix and repair and heal and resolve some issues. But we're also building to the first quarter moon taking place in Virgo energy, which means that we have a lot of processing to do. We have some sorting out to do. Again, analyzing the smaller details of the situations at hand in order for us to resolve some issues and find ourselves at an action point, at a decision point, at a choice point under the first quarter moon. So with all of that being said, there are 13 different aspects taking place here today. So a relatively busy day in the cosmos. 10 of them are going to involve the moon. The moon, while still in Leo energy, and still very void, the moon is going to interact with Neptune. Neptune, of course, in his rulership and Pisces energy. This is a tough interaction, which means that we're really not trusting our gut. We're not trusting our intuition. We're not trusting our higher selves. We're kind of creating a block for ourselves because we're so attached to the physical realm, to the physical form that we're not operating as the observer. Even more than that, there is a particular disconnect, detachment, conflict taking place in our inner realm of emotion because of course we want to move on we want to move forward we want to build passion and inspiration towards a major change a major transformation but again we're not seeing the bigger greater grander picture here because again we're kind of focused on the smaller details it is 1 39 a.m eastern standard time that the moon will be shifting into the virgo energy we're going to be sitting in that for a couple of hours until we have our first aspect. The moon, now in Virgo energy, going to make a beautiful interaction with Mercury. Mercury, of course, ruler over this Virgo energy that we're now sitting in. Mercury, of course, in his other rulership in Gemini energy. 
this is an ability for us to kind of get our heart and our head on the same page. We are again trying to really kind of tunnel vision in on what the problem actually is, what the situation, what the circumstance actually is. Now, again, we are in Gemini season, Mercury's in Gemini, so we're able to see two sides of the coin. We're able to see things from two very extreme set of eyes, so to speak. And emotionally speaking, we may have a lot of things that we need to talk about, but in the form of questions, meaning we're trying to gain clarity here. We're trying to gain information and details in order for us to feel fully informed on what our options actually are. The moon in Virgo then going to make a very tough interaction with Pluto. Pluto, of course, the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy. We're on an inner journey of examining that inner narrative, that inner dialogue, the power struggle between the old version of self, new version of self, ego self versus higher self, inner realm versus outer realm. Now, typically speaking, we like Pluto and Virgo energy kind of working together because Pluto, he does a deep dive in our psyche. That's where that egoic programming, that conditioning, that inner dialogue, that inner narrative is alive and well. The Virgo energy has the ability to move into that mental plane, to move into that chunk of our psyche and really start nitpicking, focusing in on the smaller details of the inner dialogue, the inner narrative, focusing in on the smaller details that we have to analyze to see where we can flip the script and actually empower ourselves. Now, this is going to intensify our emotions, intensify that pressure in the headspace that many of us have been definitely feeling since the beginning of Gemini season. This is also going to reveal to us hidden information, hidden details that we weren't aware of as of this particular point in time. We have to unearth a couple of things and it's likely going to come in the form of not feeling so hot, not feeling so good, not thinking so positively. Again, we have to focus on the problem in order to actually fix it. The moon is then going to try beautiful interaction with Mars. Mars is the god of war, ruling over physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger. He's fresh in this Taurus energy, and this is what gives us our trine. We're working with like-minded elements. The moon in Virgo energy, Earth. Mars in Taurus energy, Earth. What we get when we work with Earth is a realization of our physical realm of our routines, our relationships, our money matters, our habits, what it is that we are pouring into that is helping us to grow and evolve, and what it is that we're continuously allowing to take place in our lives, keeping us stuck in the same old, same old. Now, Earth energy is the physical realm. And so emotionally speaking, the Virgo energy is here to kind of observe the problematic areas. Again, Mars, fresh in this Taurus energy, He's in a pause. We have to kind of stand still in order to kind of take a good look around in order to see where it is that we're at in the scope of our external realm of our physical materialistic realm to identify what is working and what is not. Now, this is a positive interaction, a trine is a gentle nudge in the right direction. And so Mars, although very anxious with ants in his pants to kind of get started, kind of make moves here in the Taurus energy, we're just creeping. We're doing baby steps, if anything. And this particular realization is going to be about what we're passionate about, what we're inspired about, what we're excited to do, what we're excited to pursue. So this is, again, cultivating that inner fire, that inner spark, that inner flame that we're going to need to keep raging within us in order to actually push through the challenges, the obstacles that are 100% coming at us as we try to blaze a new path. Here's where things get sticky. 648 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have Mercury getting into the boxing ring with Saturn. So, of course, Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. He's in Pisces energy, trying to wrap up a cycle, trying to close the door on the loose ends, especially with the old belief system. And, of course, this is going to have a major, major effect on our mental plane. If you haven't listened to this week's Ascension Forecast, to understand where the energy is shifting and how it is impacting our physical form, I'm definitely going to recommend that you take a listen. Mercury entering into the boxing ring with Saturn is going to feel very Mercury retrograde-ish. We've been talking about how all this Gemini energy does feel like we're in a Mercury retrograde. We're not, but... 
this particular interaction is definitely going to feel like we are misunderstandings, misinformation, kind of having glitches in our mental plane, not being able to get the words out, a lack of clarity, a lack of direction, really confusing the F out of us. Now, Saturn brings a heaviness, a weight into our mental plane. Maybe we're kind of doing a deep dive in the negative Nancy narrative. Maybe we get lost on the path of pessimistic capabilities. Maybe we are just looking at things through the darkest, most porous lens that we could possibly choose for ourselves. Either way, this is a harsh reality check of our mental plane. We're having a hard time speaking, a hard time understanding, a hard time receiving. Again, it's like a glitch in our communication skills. This is also going to put us in a situation where we're questioning everything. I think we've been questioning everything in just Gemini energy. That's what the Gemini energy needs us to do is to question everything so that we can see everything from a different set of eyes, a different angle. This is going to bring up where it is that we're not necessarily trusting our gut or we're not trusting our instinct. And again, that's where the Pisces energy comes into play. The Pisces energy is intuitive. It is our higher self. It is the creative force energy that downloads us with a goal, a vision, a dream that may not make logical, practical sense, but we just know that we have to do it, that we have to follow it, that we have to pursue it. The issue here is, is that there's so much Gemini energy, which relies on logic and practicality, relies on the physical realm to kind of suggest what is possible for us, that we get stuck in the realm of the materialistic. And therefore, we don't see the hopes, the wishes, the dreams that our higher self wants us to see. We don't trust our gut, trust our intuition. Instead, we're trying to talk ourselves out of that magic and we're trying to talk ourselves into what makes the most quote unquote sense. So this is going to be a very tough energy for us to kind of move through. We are low on Fs to give, low on patience. We are low on trusting our gut, on our intuition, which means that we're low on the spiritual fuel, the spiritual, let's call it juice that we need to kind of get us through. So this is definitely going to be a harsh aspect for us to sit in. However, a square is an opportunity for growth, an opportunity for us to evolve. And so if you use these let's call them quote unquote negative aspects, even though they're very positive for growth. If we use the not so nice thoughts and feelings, if we use the tension, if we use the conflict to show us where it is that we do have excitement, inspiration, and passion to make a change, that is going to give us a little bit of clarity that we weren't necessarily counting on receiving. We sit in that energy for like three hours. And then the moon in this Virgo energy is going to make a positive interaction with the sun shining very brightly in this Gemini energy. So again, when the moon and the sun come together, there's an aha moment. There's an emotional awareness. And in this particular dynamic, I would say that the aha moment, the awareness comes in realizing that one choice point, one decision point, one path, one direction is more favorable over the other. Again, we have to identify the problems and the options, the variables in which we're currently contemplating, deliberating over in order to see one in a more favorable light. The moon then jumps into the boxing ring and fights it out with Jupiter. So just when we're receiving some insight, receiving some clarity, feeling good about some options, we jump into the boxing ring with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. Wisdom that we've accumulated through the tough love life lessons that we've already lived through. Of course, he's in Gemini energy looking to expand upon our ideas, our mental plane, our perspective, our options, our opportunities. But again, in Gemini energy, still very divisive. The extremes that we're dealing with are very extreme. So again, getting in the boxing ring, it isn't going to feel good. We're nitpicking. We're really analyzing the situations that don't feel so good, the options that aren't really that appealing. And again, an opportunity for growth and evolvement sitting in that funk is going to reveal what we're being called to do, called to pursue over the other. Again, providing us with more clarity, more options to lean into one side, one path, one choice point, one direction over the other. We're not feeling good. We're not feeling confident. We're not feeling optimistic in this particular transaction, but let that be a lesson to what is more favorable. What would make you feel better? What would make you feel more comfortable? And again, that is providing the details that we need to piece together in order to illuminate the greater grandeur plan. 
We sit in that energy for a huge chunk of time. We go from that particular aspect at 9.50 a.m. to 2.36 p.m. when the moon is going to make a positive interaction with Venus. Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in this Gemini energy, again, on the fence about whether to stay or whether to go, whether to die, whether to grow. Of course, we don't really want to die, but what something does need to come to an end, especially where relationships are concerned. There's been a buffle. There's been a conflict in this Gemini energy because again, very extreme options, very extreme opportunities. But this is a positive interaction, which means that emotionally speaking, we're feeling good about one choice point, one decision, one option, one path, one direction over the other. We're feeling like we are building to a point of confidence, a point of optimism. We're communicating our thoughts, our ideas, our emotions, our affections are concerned. This is definitely getting us heart aligned, dealing with the matter of facts at hand on what it is that we haven't been communicating, that we should be communicating in order to clear the air. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with the north node in Aries energy, that north node trying to get us on the right path, trying to kind of bust us out of codependent relationships. We need to be more independent. We have a solo quest, a solo adventure that we all need to be kind of walking at this particular point in time. So we are starting to see options to move forward. We are starting to see a little bit of growth, a little bit of healing, a little bit of repairment with some of the situations that, again, have been cluster Fs that we've been banging our head against a wall about. The moon is then going to interact with Chiron, the wounded healer, in a very awkward kind of way. It's neither good nor bad. It is just going to illuminate where it is that some fears, some doubts, some insecurities are coming up. But at the same time, at the same moment, we're rapidly processing that that belonged to the old version of self and the new version of self. The higher self has, I'm going to say, improved emotion when it comes to addressing like, oh, well, I felt that way in the past, but do I really feel that way now? Nope, don't think so. This is a beautiful interaction for us to kind of see the differences between the old version of self and the new version of self and how far it is that we've actually come. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto. So we had a not so nice interaction earlier in the day. This is a positive one, which means that we're having some aha moments in the dialogue, in the narrative, in the mental plane. We're realizing where it is that the old version of self and that old negative ass narrative has got to go. We are bossing up. We are in control and in power of the unconscious narrative that again, our egoic programming has us operating from. Because this is an intensity of empowerment, we're feeling good, we're feeling confident, we're feeling like we have the ability to rewrite the wrong, so to speak, to flip the script on that negative ass narrative and actually put ourselves in a new placement of power, especially over our emotions. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money is going to be making a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in this Taurus energy that Venus naturally rules over. This is going to be an aha moment, an awakening of sorts, a spontaneous amount of genius coming in, opening up our head and our heart to seeing where new methods of doing things definitely need to be adopted in order to create a different result, especially where relationships are concerned. This is like wild card energy. So I'm also going to say you have to expect the unexpected to pop off in your relationships, hopefully in a better way, because again, these are positive aspects, but sometimes we need shit to hit the fan before we kind of reconcile and get to that particular compromise or sweet spot. Regardless, we're operating from a new level of awareness, especially where our relationship dynamics are concerned with what it is that our heart wants us to do and pursue is concerned. And we're a little bit more open to kind of seeing we're new foreign territory, you know, whether the grass is actually greener on the other side of the fence, we're ready to explore different aspects of self and therefore different aspects of our relationship dynamic. The last thing that we got going on here today is Venus making a beautiful interaction with the North Node, which means that we are starting to see solutions, especially where reconciling relationship dynamics are concerned. We're starting to see options to make ourselves feel good, to feel safe, secure, stable. We're, we're starting to see options on how it is that we could actually move forward, kind of communicating our new thoughts, ideas, and affections 
really putting ourselves out there in a way that we've been very reserved to do over the last couple of weeks, putting ourselves in a situation where we want change. We want to do better. We want to be better. We want to see better. We want to receive better. But in order to get better, we have to do something different. This is the point, the pivot point that we're starting to realize what we could do differently within ourselves, within our relationship dynamics in order to create a different result.